I now have complete and utter faith that the house is going to look good. Well, I hope the house looks better than this. <laughs> Morning folks, it's late August and for the first time in about two months I guess since the axe lady had her operation I'm heading over to Potter Ferry to my friend Jocks and I'm going to do a, a day for him and while I'm there I'm going to be cutting some timber for the decking on the caravan so this will form part three of the caravan makeover series. No, it's, it's, it's well on its way, but I haven't got enough timber to finish it. So we're gonna cut some timber today, some inch and a half planks. And then I will machine them up back at home. And we'll go through how I've made the deck, including uh, the pre preservation technique, which is shuggy band. Japanese wood preservation technique. So maybe I'll get a bit of footage at the sawmill today, and then and then tomorrow I'm going to carry on working on the on the deck and film some of it, and then we'll put it all together for you. And hopefully it'll be useful. And it's been lovely. I've already had uh, somebody get in touch who had made the, their deck on their caravan based on the way I set out ours. So that was really nice. So if this has been helpful, this caravan makeover series, do let me know, that'd be really nice. And drop me a comment and subscribe to the channel maybe. So thanks for watching and here comes part three. Here we go. This is it. There's Ray. Say hello, Ray. <laughs> it's turned into a really nice area. So, just try and talk you through it, really. Obviously, we had to, it was an afterthought. Uh, I had already made all of the, all of this um, framing and, and post structure for that overhanging roof when I decided that it'd be nice to build the fire pit and have that bit of decking around there so I had to extend the frame out so again I've just sat it sat all the posts on block pavers you can see how wet the ground is around here we had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks uh, you know it's our guy after all that's what it does having said that we've had an amazing summer but all these posts are sitting on block pavers to keep them up. And basically I just made a frame out of six by two that had spans that were, well, they weren't ideally close enough, but they were, they're good enough. They're good enough for the size of timbers that I've got. So one of the biggest parts of this enterprise was figuring out how to preserve everything due to the amount of rain and I had no idea I was going to do that I assumed it was just going to be you know splash on the old wood preserver until a friend of mine Roy Villanis sent sent me a message talking about uh, a Japanese technique called shoshugi ban and ideally you want to do shoshugi ban um, before you put everything together because it involves burning the wood and then scraping it all back all the char that you create in the burning process And then, and then oiling it. So to do it all round, uh, you need to 
cut everything to size before you burn it. Like all these angles on the on the boards, etc. But I'd already done the all of this timber work, all of these posts. So I had to I just had to burn them in place. I've got a roofing torch. It's over here actually. I'll show you that. This is just a, a fairly standard and very cheap uh, roofing torch that connects connects up to the gas used for torch on roofing felt where you melt the backing of the felt before you roll it out um, so I burnt the whole frame with that blackened it right up then you blacken it until it really chars then rub it down rinse it off and and then oil it in our case we did it with boiled linseed oil then it was a case of getting the decking boards oh, that's an interesting caterpillar coming across here i don't know what sort that is hmm. yeah the decking boards came from otter ferry where i work on a monday and i was fortunate enough to fell the trees and use the sawmill and cut these to the size I wanted and and then I milled them to I think they're 40 mil 40 mil thick and then I had to select the boards and size them So obviously these planks which I cut on the sawmill yesterday are they've got rough edges both sides so we need to make that into a square edge plank. Uh, so all I'm going to do is run a straight line along the straightest edge and then I'm going to run that through the saw by eye just eye it through and then I'll do that on a few of them because it doesn't really matter what width they are as long as I've got enough of any one width to do a full run on the deck. So the deck's about eight and a half metres long. These boards, I think, are about just over three metres. So I'll need, I need two and a bit. So I need to make sure that I've got enough, say, seven inch to go right the way through. And it doesn't matter if the next one's ten inch. It really doesn't matter. As long as I've got enough of each to do a full run. So... And because it's you know it's, it's only a bit of decking, I'd normally you know cut the edge off and then and then run it over the surfacer on the planer so that I've got a dead flat a dead flat edge before I then ran it through the saw again against the fence to get the the right width all the way along. But because it's you know. It's just a rough old bit of decking, which is going to have a, at least a half inch gap between each plank. Oh, I'm, not, I'm quite happy to do it by eye, just off the saw. So I've cut a bunch of boards now, I've cut about six or seven, and so they've all got one straight edge now, this edge here is straight. So now I'm just checking along, see I could get nine inch out of that there, but at this end I'm not going to get nine inch, I'm only going to get eight really. So I'll cut that to an eight inch board, and I've been over all of them, and I've got about three that I'll comfortably get nine inches out of all the way along and I've got a few that are going to be eight so I'm going to set the set the saw up to eight inch cut all the ones through there and then all the ones that can make it to nine I'll cut through at nine inch and then I should have enough to do a few rows and then that'll give me a good idea of what I need 
to finish off. So next stage is set the fence up on the saw and run them through. This is an old saw I bought off of eBay quite a few years ago. It's quite an old saw, but it's powerful and it does a job. <coughs> but it didn't have a working fence, so I just got a nice big block of wood that I just clamp in place. And just measure to the end, edge of the tooth, front and back. And then clamp it into place. Yeah, I've got to have all the high tech gear. <laughs> Yeah, you use it that matters. There you go. So I set it up for eight inch first, I'll run them all through. Notice that the knots don't burn as quickly as the rest of the wood, so I generally re-burn them with a little torch. See when you've rinsed the, or rather when you've brushed the black off from the burning, which is all the carbon, it turns into this lovely brown colour. This is uh, this is spruce, so I can't vouch for any other wood what colour it will go, but it looks nice. So I'm just going to just going to wash it down now. With a hose. I've already given it a brush. Just give it a rinse down to <coughs> get rid of all the dust on the surface. And I'm learning this as I go along. It's a friend of mine, Roy Villanis, who told me about this. About this technique, I'd never heard of it. And it's fairly time consuming. I mean, you've got, you've got to cut the wood, and then you've got to cut it to the size you're going to finish it, the finished size, and you've got to burn it, and you've got to brush it, and you've got to wipe it off, and you've got to rinse it, and then you've got to wait for it to dry, and then you've got to oil it, and then you finally get to fix it in place. So it's, you know, it's another one of those things, it's not the quickest way of doing things, but. Even, it, even if it only lasts half as long as they say it will, I'll never have to do it again. Everything you look up about Shoshugi Ban suggests that this wood will now remain 
rot free, insect free, fire resistant for 80 years. Seems a little too good to be true, but yeah. I say anything lasts half that, that's good enough for me. And if I re oil it every once in a while, every few years, that'll be no great hardship. That's it. That's uh, rinsed off. So what I've got to do now is let that dry. It's quite a sunny day, so it shouldn't take too long. And then I'll, I'll get it oiled with boiled lucid oil. So they they run in thicknesses. I see all the thicknesses are different. As long as I had enough for each row, I could make it work. I just put some black plastic gutter in up to catch all the water off the roof. It's quite a sizable roof, really, I suppose, and. If you want to see uh, see how to cut gutter in, I've done a little video on the channel. The link will be in the corner. Um, but a really neat trick for cutting gutter into length. So that gutter in um, that collects the water into this tub now, which is where we wash all of our salad. Or well, I'd say wash. We rinse all of our salad. That would be a better term. So there you go. That's our deck, and we've already spent some some lovely times just sitting having a coffee um, when it's been raining just in the shelter under there it's been great and we've had the fire pit going a few times